illest uh, powers in the street, the home of new music and hip hop. Uh, DJ Raymond was not with me today, but um, we rocking out with one of the illest dudes in New York City, man. Uh, phenomenal DJ. He's been doing his thing. I kind of consider him the definition of the grind. I've been watching him for about two years. Thank you. And his game has been on point, right? You know, which sure. is why I asked him to come out. So give it up, give it up, give it up for my man Drewski, man. There's you know people I mean? in the room. We can clap it all the time. They're not on camera, but they're in the room. We're going to get the audio clap yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. They're here, you know, though. Beautiful, I like that. Beautiful you women know what I mean? in the building. But, so, uh, I just want to shout out to Raymo. I know he's not here, but I said it earlier before we started that Raymo was actually one of my inspirations as a DJ coming up, being a young boy in Jersey. And my older brother used to go to clubs that Raymo DJ that, and I, then I started going myself, and I see Raymo rocking. Then leaving the club, he's jumping in a Bentley, and I was like, "Oh, DJ's, oh, yeah. <laughs> DJ's getting money like this. I could turn this into a career." So shout out to Raymo because he was one of the inspirations to actually following my dreams as a DJ. I and in that. his absence, he actually told me to tell you, "Yo, thank you for coming out." You know, he had to go to Jamaica, spend some time oh, with the family. Oh, you know what it's like to floss and fly, man. I'm seeing you no. doing it lately, man. No, but you when you right? get time, especially in this business and as a DJ, to take time and go with your family and vacation. That's very important because those times don't come around that much. And that's one thing I'm actually working on is figuring out times to spend more with family and loved ones because you get caught up in, you know, work, 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 and you're going to take that advantage true. of that. And I know you got about, what, uh, eight kids now? No. Nah. <laughs> well, not that I know of. There might be some out not there. Not that you know, right? Yeah. Hey, Daddy's here. If, you, if you're watching this interview, holla. Chewski, <laughs> let's go home with a break. Let's do it. So let's jump right in. Um, the one thing that we, we started off with the grind and mm. the one thing that you said in a couple of interviews is that you took the train, you did whatever you had to do to get to certain places um, as you were pursuing your career professionally right. and establishing yourself. So let me ask you a question. Is that still the model? Are you still jumping on trains or we whipping it now? What oh, we no, we, we definitely whipping. I can't really <laughs> step on right now because of everything that's going on. In the most humble way, I want to say it though, like, I can't even step in a grocery store without people, like, in my business, asking for pictures, sneaking pictures. Like, asking for pictures, I love it. It's love. But when, like, they personally, you know, invading your space and taking pictures, then you see it two hours later, like, oh, Drewski was in, you know, stopping shop. And it's like a sneak pic from down the aisle. It's kind of like, yo, y'all don't got to do that, you know, but to the point of, like, yeah, we, I got to move a little more private now because any little thing I do, people want to kind of expose it. And that's like, you know, the, the bad side of everything. Of course, all the blessings are great, but it, this stuff comes with it. And I could be, you know, in a club and just talking to a female and then somebody else wants to take a picture on the low and DM it, like, yo, oh, to the sky. You know, so the gift girl. and the curse. Yeah, yeah. So now you just got to move a little different. You know, I try to remain the same person I was. But I'm just getting smarter and the people around me, like, yo, we know who you, how you move, but let's be a little smarter about the kind of things you're doing. You know, you don't want to get caught slipping. Yeah, you got a good heart, but not everybody else got that type of heart, and they might try to hurt you, harm you. So we're definitely not jumping on trains. But we're still <laughs> moving and grinding and hustling and spreading that love, but it's just a little, you know, smarter. So let's talk about that because now you're branding yourself. Right. Um, before it was about, you know, I'm going to be in every spot, everywhere. We're going, I'm going to be in, these dudes say, no, I'm there. Right. Yo, you get, yo, you, you paying 300, I'm there. You know right. what I mean? Because I, I know that's what the, the hustle's yeah, like. And, and that's you know. the one thing I like about you is that you move and you put your face mm -hmm. in a place and then you get out. You know what I mean? But now that you've uh, attained a certain status, like, does that rule still apply or do you kind of, do you kind of tweak it? Like, that ask, and I'm not asking you to give me a number on what they're asking right, right, right. for, but has the numbers changed? I'm like, yo, listen, I used to ask for that, but boom, or, you yeah, know what I mean? The numbers definitely, want to know. The numbers definitely increase, and I think as a promoter, a club owner, whatever it is, event coordinator, you have to respect it. And as soon as I see them questioning it, like, well, you know, when you first started, I gave you X, Y, and Z. It's like, yeah, but when I first started, I wasn't on this type of level. You know, there was definitely growth, and with, with that, comes changes and if they can't respect it from there then I'm like maybe we shouldn't work together you know we don't we shouldn't work together because I don't want to feel insulted myself or make you feel insulted but if you can't respect the growth then we just not on the same vibe but um, yeah the numbers increase but only because I know my worth increased 
You know, I wouldn't be asking. And I don't, you know, I'll go to places where I really don't have to go sometimes just to stay grounded, just to be in the mix, because I'm still on 197, a local radio DJ. You know, you got to... Some people make You're more than local. You know, no, no. you know where we at, but I'm just right. saying, no, I'm saying you're more than local. But and I have to, I have to 197 is are. still... You know, as big as we the, want to make it, base. yes, that's it, but base. it's still a local, it's New York City, Jersey, Connecticut. Yeah, you can stream it online, but I still got to remember our core listener are these people, and mm. I still want to be a part oh, of that and be in their that. face. Yeah. Even with the internet and streaming and the whole social media, yes, it's more global, and I could, I could DJ everywhere. I go to Japan, everywhere around the world, but still, High 97 is a local radio station. I got to remember that, that a core listener are these people that are working and, and going to these clubs and yeah, I'm gonna still be around them because those are my listeners, you know, my family, my friends, stuff like that. That's what it is. So let me, cause you did something really brave and I and I think you're probably the first DJ to ever do what I'm saying. And that is you took your lady and you said, uh, what's the official, what is the official joint? And you had made no right. involved with that. You know what the I mean? The record, make it the official. Record. Make it official. Yeah. I've never seen any DJ at any platform do that and say, yo, I'm making it official. Mm -hmm. And it was like, damn, it was like your proposal to your lady. Right, right. And you made sure. Like most dudes, especially the way you coming up, because like ladies are always on you. I'm watching you in the club. You know what I mean? Pause. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching him. He moving. And, and ladies are like, yo, pop me, pop me. I'm like, all right. You know, and they getting by you. But for you to go on record and say, yo, listen. This is my official situation. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. And make an actual video. And then bring one of our premier hip-hop artists from New York, like Mano, and get him involved. First of all, why did you do that? You know, take that route. Not okay. necessarily. I know why you did it. But right, right. to show you loved it. But why did you do a that video? Way. And then how did you get Mano involved in that? Well, first, Mano is like my brother. When people say in the industry, oh, that's my bro. I sleep at his house. He comes to my house. We spend holidays together. So right there, our relationship is different. It's not just, it just happens that he's a rapper, I'm a DJ. And, you know, that's just a coincidence. But we're friends for real. Like, my girl, his girl, they're friends. They sleep over when me and Sky arguing and I kick her out for the for a couple hours. Like, yo, just go, we need a break. She goes to Mano's house. You know what I'm saying? So that relationship is a different type of industry relationship. It's like a real, it's a real relationship. A real relationship. So when I knew I was going to put this record together with a plan, He's always the first person I go to, regardless what it is, whether it's my stuff. Other, you know, I just come to him, go to him for advice, talk, yo, man, I'm doing this. I need you. And that's always a go. The same thing, you know, if he comes to me. So that relationship, we just, we're family. So, of course, doing this, I knew I wanted him on it. Going on TV, I said, yo, I, I, you know, I never really watched the show, but I only would watch people I know. You know, like, oh, I know this person's on it. I'm going to watch it just to see. And I, and I never really liked everything I seen on Love and Hip. I'm like, okay, cool. They go on there, but at the end, the artists don't got music out, the actors are in no movies, whatever they are, they really don't do nothing at the end of the show. So I was like, going into it, I'm gonna have a little more, you could say like creative control over my storyline. I'm gonna give y'all what y'all want, because that's just who I am. Like, we could bug out and have fun, but I still have a plan. And I know, I already knew, like everything was kind of, not planned, but like, this is what I want at the end, so I'm going to use this storyline to get there. And I was working on a record with someone I knew Sky wouldn't be cool with. So they're, they're, that goes you know, to, to the producers. Y'all can have that. Make the best of that. But I'm going to really get this record together. I'm going to really get the music video together. And when it comes together at the end, it's going to lead into this proposal. So everything was kind of planned in a sense. Like I knew what I wanted. So I was like, I'm not going to be like everyone else and just let the show end and nothing happens after that. I was like, I'm going to show people that are into the show because there's millions of people that love that show. I'm like, yo, this, this is real. Like, what everything I'm doing is real. You're going to see it. And after the show, you're going to continue to see it. So we're still together. You know what I'm saying? So it was all like planned and still gave the show what they wanted. Gotcha. If, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. It was a storyline yeah. that was created. Right. That's what it is. It's reality TV, but storylines are created. Yeah, and I, so we, we kind of split the shit. Like, the show got what they wanted, the drama, but it was real drama. I was like, I'm not going to make up some storyline for the TV. Everything that's going to happen is going to be real, and at the end, I'm going to make sure I come out and I benefit, and it worked in my favor.
That's what it is. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you uh, really quickly. So you and Bianca still cool? Nah, I haven't spoke to her since. And, and that's one thing I don't like about those shows. Like, they'll cause a beef, and when it shows over, they don't care what's happening with the cast members. And she was someone I knew for 10 years. So we can't even be cool. She just started turning into, like, some beef and threats. And I'm like, come on, like, that's bad. Like, and, and, and not everyone is level-headed on the show. Like, what you see is really, you be like, nah, that can't be who they are. Nah, that's really who they are. Whether they're crazy, whether it's the, that's really who they are. So it's hard to communicate with someone that just don't get it. Yeah, so after the, that storyline is created, it's like, I get what you're saying. Right. It, it wasn't, it's not like a for. they didn't force it. It just happened to play out like that. But then when the show's over, it still continues. So, you know, they don't, no one else cares about that because they can't see it, but it's still happening where you got to, even in that sense, you can't get on the train by yourself because if someone else is on the train, something can pop off. Even like this season, I'm cool with everybody. So they come to me and he's like, I'm not going to say names, but he's like, yo, I'm with my baby mother in Walmart. And three, three of another cast member's goons ran up on me and tried to snuff me and everything. And it got like real shows over. There's probably like one episode left by this time. but And that's what you got to deal with. But the show don't care about that. They just got what they wanted. And, it's like, and you know what's crazy is that, you know, because I'm real good friends with a lot of actors and stuff like that. I'm sure you watch the show Power. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. And uh, the white girl on the show, we interviewed her. Right. And she was like, yo, she had to change her hair color because people would actually approach her in the street and be like, I'm glad you're oh, yeah, 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 that. And blah, 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 blah. And she was like, yo. And it's a, it's a, it's a story. Right. But even in that level of film, it's kind of like people embrace that and yeah. they run with it. So it's imagine like, that. Yo. They believe your character in a movie, they automatically think, oh, reality TV everything is real, so they definitely believe in your character. So if you want to come off tough on the show, or you want to come you know, a certain way, that's how they're going to treat you in the street. And I knew that, and I always, like, even telling Sky, like, going into it, like, just watch how you move. You don't want to put your hands on nobody else. Not for no check, not for no ratings. Like, yeah, because it becomes a chart. Because outside that, I'm going to get, yeah, they're going to, you go in the club to do a uh, hosting, you know, trying to pressure to see how, you know, how tough you really are. So you just got to watch how you move. But, I, like, me on the show is me in real life. So all that, you know, like you said, women in the club running up on me, like all that is me. And that was one of the questions. It's like, I decided to do it on the show because at this point, I'm like, yo, I've been running around crazy dealing with women since I was like 13. And so that, it's not like new to me or like some guys that get an opportunity and it, you know, that comes with it and they take advantage of it. It's like, there's nothing else I can do. I was already, Without being on TV or being on radio, just being you was in a school, yeah, I was already, yeah, you know what I'm I was already moving crazy at 13, 14. I so I was like, you was like, yo, listen, man, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, 15 years later, like, what more can I do? So, so the last question about Scott, you guys put together in 2000, um, I think it was like in 2016, mm-hmm. she talked about a uh, fitness thing that you guys were doing and then this thing. How was that progress? Oh, that that's project? amazing. It's amazing. Like, yeah, so the check is real? Yeah, because I'm into music. So I never really cared about fitness. And then I met her. I heard her story. She told me her story. She used to, you know, weigh over 200 pounds, like, you know, size 18 or whatever it was. She lost a lot of weight. I met her when she lost all the weight. So <laughs> I didn't know all this, right? So she's telling me this whole I story. Got you. And, but I could see in her, in her head she still was feeling like the big girl, right? She wasn't mm-hmm. really proud of herself or her accomplishments or she didn't re- wasn't like 100% confident in herself and I was like oh now I get it because you still thinking as the big girl but you're a beautiful woman your story I'm, I've always been like this but you're still inspiring me imagine what you can do for other women I was like let's talk about it let's show it we on TV that's a perfect opportunity so she dabbled into that and, and instantly like you get all this reaction like Sky, you you know, you helped me lose, you know, just by watching the show, mm. she was giving off positive energy, and I was like, yo, we could turn this into something, like, just don't let it go, just don't tell your story and let it go, so we started stripping fitness, like a uh, party 
workout atmosphere. There's more to it, like she has. So is there a video that's out right now that you guys have put together? Or are you still in the process of? No, it's not like an online thing. It's like a real class she, we do. Like I'm DJing and she's working out with the girls. So, so. do people pay to register? Yeah, yeah, it's like a real class. workout class. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and we've done it in different cities. So you sign up, you go to the website strippingfitness.com, you sign up, and it's like you come and it's we and now we partner with Def Jam, where Dave East comes to do his album mm -hmm. release party. Yeah, he told me he was. Yeah. He said, yeah, I'm about to do something. I'm like, doing what with you, Ski? Yeah. Like, you know, so Paul of those. So you know. But he I came. Do. He's actually working out with the girls. So you got a room for the forty girls. They're already in love with Dave East, so they're mm -hmm. going extra hard. So we give them like motivation to work out, and it's more of a beginner's level for people that are scared to work out or, you know, oh, I I'm just starting out, they're going to kill me. It's like, nah, we come and you have fun, music is playing, mm -hmm. Drewski's there, Sky's there, we bring celebrities to work out with you. So it's a fun party workout atmosphere, and it's just been clicking, and artists are coming, and we partner with like, Vim Vixen clothing lines and, and different companies now want to get involved because they see, you know, how well it's going, so they want to jump on. And we're open That's to that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you because, um, like, I run a showcase powers industry for about 16 years. I started it when I was the first intern at Power doing my thing. But you also are very committed to this unsigned artist movement. And I guess it's how we kind of always bump right, heads right, right. and we look. And it's like, I watch you and you're very into the music when people are doing stuff. So I, I, I guess my, there's two questions to this. Mm. So you have a strong passion for this unsigned artist thing, where every DJ doesn't. Like, let's be 100, we don't have to say yeah, no yeah, names, yeah. but dudes are not out there like that. But you're really out there looking and checking and seeing what's going on. But I guess my, my question to you is what inspired you to really focus on that? Because you're at a level now where you're supposed to be paying attention to that premier artist. Right. Not necessarily all these unsigned oh, right, artists. Right. So what inspires you to kind of keep doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's like two things to it. One, me being a successful DJ now. But coming up, I really didn't have no one to help me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, until I met Cypher Sounds. There was no one guiding me or putting me on or showing me how to move, with, you know. So I did a lot of it on my own and I've realized how hard it is, you know, mm -hmm. just to be a DJ. And now at a time where all these artists, there's thousands of artists trying to get on, you know, it's, it's hard. So I was like, let me give advice or whatever I could mm -hmm. that I've learned on my own to these artists. And when I see them grow and I see them succeed, it actually makes me happy. like. It keeps me going. So it's like fueling my own energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if someone gets on, you can stand next to them, but they're already, you know, popping. You ain't really contribute to that success. So me contributing and seeing people grow, like the A-boogies, the designers, it makes me happy. And like, oh, okay, I want to keep going. It keeps me feeling like young. Like and you want to see these people again. win. Yeah, I actually want to see them win. And I even fought for a few years with Hot 97 because, you know, at a certain level, people don't care about unsigned artists and likewise artists, I right? got you so when I go and I'm like yo let's do a show forget what everybody else doing don't worry about we talking about right here hot let's do a show for new artists like people don't listen people don't care people in their car you're gonna change it I'm like and I just kept fighting for it and I finally get a show on Hot 97 where I can play new artists right this is two years ago I started doing a show and the reaction from that you know they start seeing not everybody start doing supporting new artists which mm -hmm. Cool, I could be like, oh, wait, y'all wait until I get to do it. But it's good, because that's the whole point of me, is like to get every get it on everyone's radar. So to set the trend. It, right. You know what I mean? And because it helps the artist at the end. If everybody wants to be a part of that wave, it's going to eventually help artists grow and succeed. So it was like, it, may, it just makes me happy to see someone win, and I'm a part of it. Because I, you know, in, in return, I'm winning as well. So it's, it's just not me. Yeah, because if they bubble from something you created, you'd be like, yo, I need you to come out and do your thing. Right, right. You know? and, and I completely understand that. And I, you, you would know, a lot of DJs, uh, one of, most of them are like the ones like when I was coming up, like techie, geeky type of people, right? Mm -hmm. So into music, into computers and stuff like that. So you don't know how to communicate with people or you're just scared to go out to certain places. And a lot of the showcases and a lot of the artists when they're, young and, and raw, they're in the hood, in the streets in hip-hop. So a lot of DJs are scared to go to certain places. 
That was something that I never. And that's cared that's about. one of the reasons I highlighted that that part of it because, like I said, like I'm not one of them people. I walk in and I do what I gotta right, do. Right, right. And I use whatever relationships I have. But you do the same, and I notice that you don't come through with like a thousand security people. Like yo, people gotta never keep it. Have it's not like it's very real, and I guess that's one of the reasons that we always kind of bonded on that quick conversation or whatever. Yeah. And I see. But, you know, definitely what you're doing is, is something that the industry has needed for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I 100% support that, man. You Thanks. know, that's why I have to reach over to the other side. Right, right, right. Drewski is that dude that does that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't play the politic game with all that industry stuff. If they don't respect it, that's cool. I'm going to just continue to do what I do, and that's help people with my platform. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm really out there. Like, a lot of people, oh, I'm out, I'm out there. I'm in... Highbridge. I'm from Jersey, right? You go to somebody else's hood. It's and I was about to ask you. I'm from Bridge, Jersey, right? In the Bronx, and there's 50 blood gang members, 20 crip. You know what I'm saying? Some people feel uncomfortable. I, I actually feel more comfortable around those type of people than being at a record label because it mm-hmm. feels so fake. Right here, it's raw, it's real. Mm-hmm. You could feel the energy, the hunger, and they'll work. And the opportunity. Yeah. Right. So, so identify a new talent. Like you could point around if we get the next J, the next yeah. big. They're not the gonna go big, out there you know and do I mean? it. So if I gotta be the person to actually go into the field and, and find someone, and then bring it to them, cool. Because they're not gonna do it. I just don't want one of these kids to get missed because they're not close enough to these people. You know what I'm saying? Do you get what you get it? I completely. Yeah, because they're so detached from it. They might be somebody talented, but they're just so scared to. Go there and grab them. So I want to be the person to bring it to them. And say, hey, look, you know what I mean? Right. And I tell people, like, it's not about the bag. Like, for me, it's never been about the no, bag. No, no. It's about making sure that they're able to connect. Because half the time, they don't even know who the major producers are. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Amadeus is one of my best friends. You know what I mean? And Amadeus was produced for over 90 artists, 50. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I know. But they, if they don't know, they'll walk by him in a club. Like, And I'm like, yo, this is Trey Song's music. The right, reason right. Trey Song's has a band is because of this dude right here. You see what I'm saying? So I completely understand what you're yeah, saying, man. man. It, it's, it's definitely a, a dope look. So let me ask you now, like with the connection with all these major artists and, and doing that stuff, because I want you to kind of walk me through what a what a day looks like for Drewski. And when I say a day looks like, because DJs have certain days. They get up in the morning, they do this, they do this. You got to go to this meeting, you got to go to that. Because right. you, you have to be in programming meetings, but then you have to go to label meetings. Like, talk to me. Just give me an example of what one day looks like for you. Uh, the great thing and the blessing is one reason why I love doing this is that every day is pretty much different. So you never, like, I never say, yo, I'm bored of this, you know, because every day is different. But... My days, I like to start them from the nighttime, right? Not from the morning, because I'm coming home in the morning. When people are waking up from work at five, six in the morning, I'm actually coming home. So I'm doing a club, you know, or two clubs a night from midnight to five in the morning. And I come home and maybe sleep for four hours. And then I'm up, because now Sky's working as well. So some, some days I'm up early, taking her to do a photo shoot for Lala Anthony, who's releasing some new clothes, you know what I'm saying? So we do that, and then right after that, I'm meeting with like label people, that just people that have all these ideas for me that they want to do, you know? Um, I just did a whole campaign with Timberland. So I'm taking Sky to do Lala Anthony's shoot, and from there, she's coming with me to help me do this whole Timberland campaign, which is a photo shoot, and they run through like the boot they're gonna use, and, and that takes up a few hours. So we finally get to eat a quick little sandwich, and I'm heading to Hot 97 for a music meeting, because we do the meetings where it's like 13 DJs sit around and we vote on records. Jock me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, they But the music yeah. mixer, what do you call them? The mixer? The yeah, mix like a mixer meeting, and then we all sit around and vote on records that we think we should play. Um, from there, it's, it's always something, it's, you know, radio, like today, right after this. I got, so what I do is I take new artists and I do listening sessions with them where they could do one-on-one. So right after I leave here right now, I'm heading to the studio and I'm going to sit from, from 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, three listening sessions with brand new artists that are going to play me records. And then I take an hour to prepare, prepare for my show and at 11 o'clock I'm going live. So right there, that whole, that's like five hours gone already that I know. So it's, it's always like... I don't have days off, I have like hours off. So I have like three, four hours off to do something. And that goes back to what I said, like spending time with family is important when you could get it. 
because you don't have like I never really have days off. I'm on the radio every day, overnight mixing Saturdays three to seven, and then Sundays eleven o'clock. So even if I want to take a Sunday off, I know I got to be in the city from Jersey because it could take an hour to get here. I got to be here by ten. So it's never like a whole day. I can't go on vacation because I got to do this. And I like being live, and I don't like recording. I like, yeah, I like the being... pre-record. And that's the thing. New York City should never be like that. Because right. in the beginning, a New York radio was never like that. A lot of cities do that. Yeah, and I noticed yeah. that the DJs will pre-record and say, and I get cats are busy. You know, I know a lot of dudes that do it. Right. But I think that New York deserves that live radio. Right, yeah, of course. You know, if I have there, to, you know what I mean? then I do it. But I try not to. I try to be live as much as I could. Just so I could be there. You know, anything can happen any minute. I'm on social media doing my show. I see something, a record drop. I want to be on it. You know, stuff like that. So I try to be as live. So every, I work every day. So it's hard to, you know, I got to plan ahead of time to take a day off. And I, outside of the radio and meetings, then is the clubs. And that's like to keep relevant in the street, to keep relevant with the listeners, to make the extra money. So I got to do that. And that's like, you know, you try to book as much as possible. So I can't turn down no bookings. I want to live a nice life. I got to take everything I could get. And that makes 100% mm -hmm. sense, man. Let me ask you, man. So what's what's next for Juski? Because it sounds like you might be evolving into a label one day, man. Is that something mm -hmm. you're interested in? Like creating your label, like Rockefeller, Bad Boy, right. Def Jam? Like, is that something you see in the future? Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm taking the movement, you know, thing to the next level. The movement was something me and Cypher started. Where we're like, that was going to be my next question, right. but so I'll answer both. Help, yeah, save some time for your next guest. We put um, the movement was like taking artists, producers, videographers, everyone, and just doing collaborative work, like getting everyone that's new, that's fresh, working together. And that's how it started, but it grew so much, and then the radio show became the new movement show, it was all new artists. So now I'm like, all right, cool. What we're gonna start doing is I'm breaking these artists, they blow up, and then that's it. So instead of just blowing everyone up and losing contact, we want to start taking artists. Like I don't want to be a DJ and, and make a bunch of records and put them out and then I'm the artist. Like We're going to do that, but also sign artists to the movement and get them deals and, and get them management and get their structure together and put a plan together for certain artists that we feel deserve it or that have you know the right energy. And, oh, he's going to blow. We always say, oh, he's, he's going to blow. But we don't do nothing as DJs, producers, whatever. We just help them, they blow, and then you can't even get in contact with them. So it's like, if we find someone that deserves a shot and we feel we can help, we want to sign them to the movement and then go and get them a deal. And, and that's so it. you're more of a, so, it, so are you looking at a label or are you looking more management? Because you know you can't be managed without right. a label. So more like, like what are you what are more you looking at? Label production. More label. Wise. Yeah. So they have their own managers, they yeah, come yeah, and they yeah. say boom, you know, we're well, we are even I know good managers. So within that I can set you up with the right management if if you as an artist feel that it works. But sometimes artists come and don't all they have is talent. They don't got no structure, no nothing. They don't know nothing. So it's like if you believe in me and I want, you know, you to make your own decisions, but we're here to, we're here to help. So whatever you need, just let me know. And if we feel like they deserve it, then we're going to sign them to the movement and then go blow them up and then get a record deal. Like, don't just so, try to jump into a record deal. A lot, of, a lot of artists want to, like, yo, I want to get signed. But they'll screw you if you ain't got the, the proper structure put together. So let me ask you, how'd you wind up, you, you, you explained that you and Maine all like brothers. Right. How did you wind up with Maine? Because you're also very tight with Jim Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did how did you wind up with a relationship with the two of those dudes? Because they're the most dramatic dudes oh, yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah. I love them dudes, but they're the most dramatic dudes to be around with, man. Nah, I think it's different. Like, they're artists. So most artists are dramatic or all for crazy, whatever. Yeah, but Maino is a street dude. And so is Jim. They're yeah, real they're street dudes. They're smart dude. Like, people look at them as street dudes, but Jim is and Maine, they're like, smart businessman as well and i think yeah i'm a i'm a dj but a lot of it like it's business i'm a businessman too and i could be covered late like yeah we got our talent but it only goes so far but as businessmen we can turn this into something so like jim you know he owns a football team now that has nothing to do with music it's just he's smart as street as he is that that's his persona but if you're looking like what he's doing clothing lines and you know sneaker stores and mm -hmm. fo football teams like some of the artists that maybe non-street, 
are not even doing stuff like that. So at the end of the day, they're, they're, you know, maybe when they were young, they were a little more aggressive, but I just respect how they move as businessmen, as artists, like even being, being able to be in the game so long and still mm -hmm. relevant and we're still talking about them, that's a big deal. You know, for Jim to 25 years, 20 years, however long he's been in here with Dipset, like, yeah. still, I'm still <laughs> getting booked and they're booking him as well. So to be able to see him still working, like that's, that's hard to do. A lot of artists don't, you know, Yeah, last the level of longevity is yeah. just not, not existing. And so on much. top of being businessmen and great artists, they're real people. You know what I'm saying? No matter what they have, all the money they have, you know, they're just real people. When you're in the house with them, it's not even like Jim Jones the rapper. It's like, like Jimmy, like they're just cool people and we just connect. So it's, that's all it was. It's just like a connection of energy. I'm on, I've been on the road with them, like traveling days, like actually being with them day after day after day, for 17, 20 days. And you just like, yo, he's a real dude. I'm a real dude. We just real people. And that's what it is. Let me ask you, man. What made you want to be a DJ? Like, when did you realize that, yo, I want to be a DJ. Like, this is what I want to do. I don't know. Did you like, first try never, rapping or like, like nah, never, 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 <laughs> never. I was always into music. Spit that, man. Never. No. I would like make people spit. I guess that's part of it. Like in school, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, you rapper? Like, set up little battles and stuff and have artists spit. I'm like, but I always like was cool with everybody, no matter what group it was in, in school, high school, and. I feel like as a DJ, when you're in a club and all these people are there, you're sort of like conductor. Like you could, you're leading the party, leading the emotions, leading the feelings. And you say, put your hands up. They put their hands up. So I always felt like, in a, a leader sense, like everyone would come to me, no matter what it was. Like yo, how do I do this? How do I do that? Or just anything, whatever it was. And I always was like a hustler, selling stuff, selling bandanas to gang members, and, and they would just come to me. I was always like that dude. <laughs> So I was like, how like how do I turn this into something? I don't, you know, I really didn't know what else I wanted to do. I love music, even being young, and I wasn't be able to be a part of it. But like, my dad, who was doing like property management, saved up like his money and would do concerts. But he would do like rock and roll concerts. And then one time he did um, a show with like Biggie. Biggie was like the headliner, but Busta Rhymes and all of them came, and it was like in my hood in Elizabeth in Jersey. But I was wow, too young to Biggie? go. Yeah, Biggie, wow. Buzz, Kim was there, and um, I was too young to go, but my older brother, who's like seven years older than me, it was like more for him, because he was into hip-hop, and we ain't live with my dad, so my dad would, you know, do special things, and one of it was a concert with Biggie, and I, I was like, oh, and as a kid, I wanted to like be around it, and I never got to go, and I'm like, one day I'm going to do my own, like, you know, I'm going to be a part, I'm going to be cool with these people. Let me ask you something, man. And while I recognize that hip hop is a very diverse community yeah, when it yeah. comes to music, initially it doesn't ever start off like that. You, and let me let me ask this question before I ask the other question. What is exactly a nationality? Me, I'm yeah. American. You're American. I'm Italian. No, you Jewish or Irish. you Italian? No, Italian you know? and Irish. Because right. what you know what's crazy is that my family was really cool with MC Search. Oh, okay. so he was Jewish. Right, right, right. Like right. coming up, so. I remember as a little kid, I'm listening to Gas. Basically, I'm like, I know Isaac. So, you know, so you, you're uh, Italian, Italian and Irish. Irish. Yeah. Wow, like 75% okay. Italian, quarter Irish. So, do, do you, I guess my next question to you is, how does that affect you in this community? Because, you know, hip-hop, hip you know, primarily is people of color, but they don't receive... Sometimes oh, yeah, they don't course, receive it. And how does that affect your book? It's like, like, how did that affect your book? It's like, yo, I'm DJ Drewski, I'm doing my thing. Like, Hot 97, once you're on, you're on. We no, already no, no, know no. that. But before coming that, up, yeah, like, how that. the fuck do you... Because cause a lot of people don't know Kid Capri is Italian. Like, right, right. You know what I mean? And I knew him growing up, and again, I was a little kid. So, you know, idolizing him and stuff like that. But a lot of people didn't know just the way he flowed. But how did that affect you, like, being... You know, being yeah, Italian, yeah, coming up, you know, not being the, the typical black guy, yeah. Puerto Rican guy, DJing. Like, how did that affect your bookings? How did, you know what I mean? Like, talk to me about that. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because until I felt like people started knowing me, like, oh, that's DJ Drewski. Before that, since a kid, I never experienced or, like, never experienced any uncomfortable situation like that. Maybe, like, once in a while, but... I think just growing up, because we grew up in an urban 
neighborhood, like all my friends were Hispanic and black. And like my, my dad gets mad when I say, I'm like, yo, I never had any white friends, Italian friends, Irish friends. I never had white friends, like close friends. Friends I slept over, my best friends, my, you know what I'm saying, I spent time with, it's always either Hispanic or black. So to me, I never really seen it. Like I never, it never hit me until I started getting interviewed and they would ask that question. And like the first time, like, oh shit, you right. But it was like weird in a sense, like, yo, I never felt uncomfortable or anything. Like I'm sure behind closed doors, they go through like, if a promoter is trying to book, like, oh, will it work? But I think once you reach a certain like level or, you know, you get a certain accolades, it's like, oh, well, there's nothing to question. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as a DJ and, and thank God I'm in music, because politics, it might affect me, but in music, because music touches everyone, as long as you know how to play it and you know, you're know good at it, it, I don't think it affects you. And I, and I never tried to be nothing, you know what I'm saying? I never tried to be cool. And you try to act like you was yeah, something. Yeah, because I, it would never you know really I mean? register. Like, yo, this is who I am. Yeah, I always was, I wasn't even saying, yo, this is who I am. I never even tried to like push a situation. Like, they either knew me and messed with me and, and helped me, or I just oh, yeah. didn't, they didn't, they didn't, but it never registered, like, oh, maybe he didn't book me because he don't think, and it's crazy because majority of the parties I DJ are Hispanic and black parties. Like, they book me the most, <laughs> which is, you know, I, it could be like, um, the fe maybe, oh, Drewski, maybe the, it helped me in a sense in this industry, right? Because they're not expecting me to come in here and turn shit up. They're not expecting it. So when I do it, it's more like a surprise, and it's more like a show, which is cool. I'm just in it to DJ because I love it and to make a living, and it's been working. So I never really... I mean, I've already heard it. They're like, right. oh, that's a dope-ass white boy, man. Yeah. I mean, it that's is all I heard. And that's like, fine, and there's nothing wrong with that. You, you know get, what I mean? I, once, you embrace the culture. Yeah, when I got on TV is when I started getting like the comments like, oh, you want to be back? I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, the, you're That's so ignorant to write that. I'm not gonna respond. I'm not gonna let it. I'm gonna in one ear out the other because that don't even make sense. What is it to want to be black? So you're already saying it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just never really faced any of that. And I, I, I actually want to interview like white kids that done it because I can't even relate to stuff like that. Well, you come from Jersey, so yeah. a lot of people. Hey, a lot of like the country, yeah, where you come you know, from. You know, it's dirty Jersey out there, so yeah. you know. But I never, it's hard to like answer that question because I never experienced it. And even if when someone tried, it never like bothered me. I'm like, oh, they don't know me. I get it. I never took it personal or question myself. Like, Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, and it's not because we sit here, I don't look at you as one of them dudes that's like, yo, he just wants to be what he's not. Yeah. Like, dudes is like, yo, what up, man? How you doing? And you're very laid back and relaxed and you're very professional about right. the way you handle stuff and the way you treat people because I observe that. You know, like unsigned artists, you'll embrace them, you'll take the picture with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. You'll even give them a number. And I'm, look, I'm looking at you like, yo, oh, cool. Yeah, we wasn't <laughs> raised. I was never yeah, raised to like, my immediate family is the only, like on my mom's side, we're all, all white. Like all my cousins are mixed, you know what I'm saying? Like everyone around me is mixed. In my family, so we wasn't raised to even. I mean, your like, mix alone, like being Italian and Irish, right, right, right. traditionally they have beef. They a lot of people don't even pay attention. Yeah, people to be that writing shit. like, "Oh, <laughs> don't support Drewski's part of the KKK." I'm like, technically, I wouldn't even be able to be a part of it. I'm Italian. You know yeah, and they don't get that. Yeah. That's that's what the ignorance. Yeah, that's, yeah, but it is like technically, I wouldn't be able to. So we but, talked about we talked about um we talked about your mentor, who is uh, DJ um, Cypher, Sound. Cypher Sounds. Um, and he's been in the game since the very beginning. Right. Part of Pitbull. But let's talk about your other mentor. Because I believe, I mean, she's been instrumental in this game. And you know who I'm about to bring up. Yeah, of course. Angie Martinez. Yeah, yeah. She has been, like, instrumental in the game and, and creating people. At, well, not creating people, but giving them opportunities to excel. But not everybody. Music, you know? She's very selective. No, no, she's very selective. So and I'm, as when I say that, people, but wait, wait, wait. The reason say, I'm like, saying that is that, that Angie has given people a chance. Right. And some people have been successful. Right, right, and some right. people have not. Oh, yeah, and right. she says, yo, listen, I gave you your shot. You mm -hmm. blew it. But she hasn't said it publicly. I'm not going to no, say it publicly. But you, I would probably say, are one of the most successful. Because the one thing I know about Angie, I know Angie. 
So Angie comes from her mother was a programming director for a right, jazz right. station. She got on. She used to get sandwiches for the station. So I know the, the so, I know the yeah, background. Right. But you probably are the most successful. What I want to say, protege of her. Right. And she could have been in the game and inspired because this game gets kind of far where people don't even show yeah. love. And but she's like, yo, she gave person. me an opportunity to produce her show. And she is probably the most demanding yes, person. Yes, yes. And she's very difficult. So for you to take that both go to <laughs> ride and last and then go on to be DJ Drewski, who you are, let's talk about that journey. Yeah, well, first was Cypher for putting me on. Like, you know, he was doing Get you in the door. Get me in the door. So with Cypher, I was, you know, not only DJing, opening up for him, but I was shooting and editing all his videos, right? Mm-hmm. So the station found out, oh, you shooting at the videos. They asked me to start doing it for the station. Now in my head, just like I said earlier, once I got on TV, I had a plan. Once I got in the door, I had a plan. I said, it's so hard to get into on that radio, to be a DJ, to be a jock. It's hard, and a lot of people don't put you on. I already knew that. So I'm like, I'm going to get in, I'm going to shoot and edit video. Station hires me to shoot and edit their video. Not Cypher now. For the station, I'm getting a check from Hot 97. I'm going in there shooting Angie's interviews. By the time she was leaving that day, I would have the interview shot and edit, sent over to her. Hold up, cameraman, I want you to hear this right. so you understand. There is no delay. Right. And I always tell all the cameramen, like when we do stuff, I'm not going, but when we do stuff at another spot, the turn on oh, is yeah, quick. Yeah. And let me ask you a question. Well, you got a check for it, but prior to that, no, you didn't know it wasn't a, 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 really not a check. That's my it's point. Check and that's what cats got to understand, that right. it's always about the work that you do that people see. Oh, yeah, yeah, and course. that's what brings them to you to say, yo, listen, I want to rock with this person. Right. Because once they know if you're doing it for the check, then they're not going to yeah, rock it was with Because there's a thousand people that are going to work, I'll work you a hundred times harder. Hundred times. So I'm glad. And that's like, why I brought up that question. Because I remember you today did today had it much easier. They do it on digital. They got cards. They could dump the footage. It's quick. We was using tape and all that. <laughs> so that I make it clear. But I would have everything done. I'll go in the studio. She had biggest artist there. I would never ask for a picture with the artist. Never interrupt. Never do nothing. Go in. Do my job. Let me say, let me get this done before Angie leave. So she can approve it. So it can go up. And I think just from her seeing my work ethic and just my respect when I stepped in her studio because not everyone can step in her studio. If you come in and no one got a purpose, <laughs> if you don't have a purpose of being in there. I'm going to give you a sneak preview. Crazy. I might get in trouble for this. But Angie Martinez's studio is her studio by herself. Right. When you hear DJ do that five to six mix, they're in another... D right. She does not let you step in her studio. So understand that she is the most demanding person, most efficient person. Like, she does not play right. games. Am I lying, Drew? No, no, no. You're right. And, and to make that... Back to that is the fact that I was allowed in the studio. I already knew I'm going to do right because I want to keep coming in here. Because eventually I want to be on the radio. And this is the closest thing to that microphone, to that radio, mm -hmm. is this studio. So every time I would go in, boom. Then she, she just respected, like, my work ethic. And just me as a person and my personality and uh, her producer at the time was leaving and they came to me like, yo, Angie said you want to produce her show. I'm like, I already knew. It was no question. Like, one step closer to that microphone, um, but I knew what came with it. Like, everything we were just talking about. But as I was in the studio, you know, I learned so much just sitting next to her. Not even, I didn't even have to ask questions. I would just mm -hmm. listen and watch the way she moved, the way she would respond. I'll be listening to her on her phone, not just to be, you know, sneaky or listening to her, just the way she interacted with people. It was about that. It wasn't about what she was saying. It was how she was saying it. And just a certain way she moved and her thoughts on stuff. And I absorbed so much just by being next to her for years, every day. I was with her more than anyone. So we're there every day, five mm -hmm. hours a day. And I absorbed so much that I said, once I absorb it, I'm going to start applying it when it's my turn. And even to today, I use some of her techniques and just the way she moves and all that shit. So it was like a blessing to be next to her. She didn't even have to do nothing. She didn't have to put me in a position. I didn't want that. I just wanted to be next to her to learn. And I learned so much that it helped me moving forward. Like, even when she left Hot 97, I was sad. Like, I'm like... Damn, I don't care about her leaving. I just felt like I'm going to lose too. It's a lot for me because I was learning so much. I already learned a lot. And she told me, like, don't worry. 
She you ready. She's, and that, she's so good that she knows, like, you've been next to me for so long, I can leave and, and you can walk on your own. Basically, she told me in that sense, and she was right. Because I was like, you know what? I learned all this from Cypher, from Angie, from everyone I was around that was successful, that made a living off of this. Now it's my turn. And then once I get on, I want to be able to do the same thing for someone else. Now, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's starting with the artist, but it could be anyone to inspire. But she taught you how to play chess. And that's the important yeah, yeah. part. But, you know, but in a, not in a like scummy way. Angie nah, was and it's not, yeah, cause and Some people play what? chess, but they're like snakes. And you know she what? That's like just that. like, just and, and some real. people do that. I agree with you, man. Yeah, yeah. But she taught you how to play this game and say, this is what it is. She right. knows you. She taught you how to value your worth. Right, she exactly. taught you to understand the work ethic. Right. She appreciated it. Because again, she is very demanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but I ain't most, never well, seen. most women like, are. You know, okay. They are, but in this game, she's probably the most demanding. And you got to respect yeah. that because she'll bring the best out of you. Oh, yeah. Of you know what I mean? You're either going to sink or swim with this lady. No, you always, you know always, I mean? like, tippy toeing in and walking on thin ice, all those, like, when you're around her, it's not a comfortable situation because any minute, it's not. she just turn into a beat. Like, if something's not right. Angie, we know the blackout. No, but it, it, all, it, all, it all teaches you to be strong and smart and on your A game. Like, if a pen wasn't next to her paper, somebody was catching it. So you just got to be proactive. Like, I had to go in there and make sure everything was right because now it's on me. I can't blame the intern. She don't want to hear that. So everything had to be on point. And so I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. And we say, and this is why I like Angie, yeah. excuses are for the incompetent and weak used to build monuments of nothingness. Right, right. So when a cat hits me with an excuse, it's so, oh, this is why I didn't, I kind of sit back and I fall back. For me, I'm a little more receptive and a little more relaxed, but it's not acceptable. Right, right, you know why? Because when you're mad because you're not at this certain place, it's because those people that beat you out understood the you game. You can't blame yourself. You can't blame You know what I mean? And that, that's what cats got to understand. Mm -hmm. So I know you're about to hit these streets and do your yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you too long. I think that the information that we share with people is valuable. Right. You know, um, you should definitely tell everybody how they can get at you. But uh, I, I have one last question for you. Go and for I wrote it down. Um, seeing yourself, uh, do you see yourself, here, here was my thing. Do you see yourself leaving radio? And if you do, um, when I say this, I'm talking about going to a more national level. Because radio right. is, like you said, it's local, it's what it is. Even though Hot 97 is, you know, in New York and the other station is in New York. Right. But understand something. Where do you see yourself in five years moving? Do you see yourself leaving? Like, yo, radio is, is a stepping stone. I want to do something national. I want to be worldwide. Yeah. No, like, what's your vision of on Of course, that? we all want to grow. And everyone. Because we know TV thing. is where it's at. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, some people think TV, some people think internet, you know. Radio is like is a drug, so I I feel like right now I need it. Even with everything else going on, I still love love the radio. I love what I do. Whatever, however people think, oh, it might be dying. Like it's still a major influence. I'm able to, like we said, help new artists. So I need radio to do that. That makes me happy. You know, sometimes it's not all about the bigger checks. Like it's what because I could be in Hollywood, but if I'm not happy. It's, it's gonna be bad. Like, you know, you start turning, you just, it's not good. It's not good for your soul. Like, my thing is to be happy, and, I, and I've been blessed already. So, you know, I, I don't wanna say oh, shit on radio because without radio, I wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't even care about me. So, the radio, I don't plan on leaving unless I had to, had to, like, for a bigger opportunity. But even then, I feel like we were talking about people recording. Like, there's always ways to. Keep it, and and that's like my home, my core, my first love. So it's like you know I'm gonna get a new car, but I still keep my old car. I put it in the garage and make sure to clean it, you know, drive it once in a while. But I still want it. I'm not gonna give it up. Mm -hmm. So unless somebody takes it, then I'm then that's the only way I'm gonna lose it. But I'm not giving it up anytime soon. That's what yeah. it is. So we, before we get out of here again, I want you to remind people you're leaving this interview. What are you about to do right now? Leave here. What time? I don't even know. I'm probably late. I'm going to sit with three artists that I never met before. Brand new artists. They're not popping. They're taking up three hours of my time of my life that I could be doing something else. I could be spending with family, but I'm going to spend the next three hours with three artists, listen to their music, critique it, whatever we can do to help. Then at 11 o'clock, on the radio, after radio, go DJ, go home, wake up, 
and the same thing tomorrow, another party tomorrow night. Like it's, it never ends. It's always, always something. That's but what it yeah. is. So again, Powers Industry, home of new music and hip hop. And I know you're asking me why, but this is why I had to interview this dude and I had to reach across the table to get him to come through. Had a it was a lot of politics, but we got past the politics. Yeah, that, that's one thing here. I hate the politics you know, in this industry. It is. It's so crazy. whack. It's so whack. But you know, the one thing I've learned being in the game from Only Love, from Ad Love and all of them is you build your own brand. And you know, they don't own you. Right. Drewski is Drewski. So while they provided a platform, that is great. But understand, you own your name. I own my name. Right. We own our name. We do. We do out here. Yeah, that, that's I mean? my whole thing. Like with the question leaving radio, I just want to make sure say that ever happens. And when I leave, I'm still me. I'm st my brand is still strong, and and that's the goal. I think with anyone doing anything, like yeah, we work for companies and we work for other people. But if you were to leave, would you still be strong by yourself? And, and that's what I'm trying to do. And I love that chain. My man got that oh, MV, yeah. MT joint. And see, that's the loyalty and the love. Big shout out to Cypher Sounds, one of the funniest games. He's evolved as a comedian. But see, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to reach down and give back. And a lot of the people don't understand it. Yeah. What they want to do is they want to pigeonhole it. And they want to say, Yo, I'm going to be here forever. You're not going to be here forever. Logically, you should say, I'm doing my time. Move on from a DJ to a programming director to a record exec and give somebody else an opportunity. Yeah, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you, know I mean? you want to be in the business, just look and, and follow some of the greats. Cypher put me on, right? Gave me, I got a bunch of blessings. I'm helping artists. Cypher who put me on, he got his blessings. He wanted to do comedy. He's traveling with Dave Chappelle right now. It's a blessing for a comedian. He got a TV show on True TV, a comedy show on True TV. That's another blessing. Like, but that all, that just doesn't happen. You can't be a bad person to get that. Yeah, you get good. You, know, you get good. David Chappelle is official. And what's crazy is me and Cypher kicked it. Right. And, and I was like, damn, how'd you get it? He was like, yo, let me tell you, man. Dave came to me one time. He said, yo, you should just do comedy, man. You funny. Right. Well, he was just DJing. He just started DJing for the show. He show. might have been telling the joke. You know what I mean? I don't think you're that funny. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't think he's that funny? I was saying that. He's taking shots right now. Nah, that's kind of <laughs> But nah, it's true. Like, you do nah, but he's a, a, he's a good. Let, let me tell you, Cypher in the beginning wasn't that funny. <laughs> and I think that now when he started hosting, I was sitting. All right, next uh, yeah, comedian yeah, yeah. up is boom. But then I think you know dudes came to him and said, "Yo, you gotta you gotta cultivate, cultivate." And Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, who's one of the funniest dudes on the planet, yeah. came to him and told him, "Yo, listen, you." He stopped him. He told me he stopped. Him. I said, "No, you gotta go back out there. Right, right. You gotta go." He's like, "Oh, so you want me to tell?" He said, "Him and the promoter, because you know the promoter, like, fuck that. I'm yeah, hating yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna be funny." Right. So he sent that nigga back to the stage, and he was like, "Uh, uh," but he got it, and you know, and it's a beautiful thing, yeah, man. And cool. I'm glad he's passed that baton to you, and I'm wishing you the best of luck. We One thing he told me though is, "Don't and this, don't have no ego." Yeah. Once you have an ego, you know, it, it holds you back. So, and everybody keeps telling me you're the most humble dude. Remo has said that very clearly. They said the most humble He's like, yo, huh? No, he said he's the most wife. humble oh, dude. Oh, okay, cool. He didn't describe you as white. Like, yeah. we don't even see color no more. It's just what it is. Because <laughs> you got to be who you're going to be. And the one thing, is, like, you, there's no front to you. you right. I mean, you're not coming out here trying to act harder than what you need to nah, do. Nah, I don't cool, got to. You know, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know. He got sky with him too, man. You know, yeah, got I'm, look at that. Like look at that. That's a blessing. You get a bad chick and a good one. It is, man. Oh, I'm man. blessed. You know what I mean? I can't Deuce ask. Deuces is man. mad. So, yo, we out of here, man. Powers Industry. Let them know your handles, how they can yeah, get yeah. in contact with you, how they can book you. Because, you know, a lot of people want to definitely book yeah, you. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Book I yourself know. a white DJ that could play hip hop <laughs> music. Now, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all social media at Sodrewski. You can check out the website, The New Movement, MBMT. Dot com, the new movement dot com for all new artists that want to submit your music. And Hot 97, I do the new at 2 a.m. weekdays, Saturdays 3 to 7, and Sundays 11 p.m. to midnight. That's the new movement show. You know, just get with it. That's what it is, man. Drewski in the building. Your boy, boy, I'm mad. Let's go. Ah!